Hey, g'day guys. Uh, for those of you who don't recognise us, my name is Matthew Arnold. I'm a commercial helicopter pilot based out of Australia. Um, this video is the second in a series of how to prepare and pass the Australian CASA exam, specifically operations, performance and planning subjects. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at helicopter hover ceiling heights. Uh, so, so really, from three, I guess three angles or three perspectives. One, what is a helicopter hover ceiling height? Two, what factors affect the helicopter hover ceiling height and how do we calculate it out? And three, as commercial pilots or even as private pilots, why does a helicopter hover ceiling height actually matter? Uh, the helicopter I'm going to be looking at today, guys, will be the Bell Long Ranger, using the flight extract as prepared by CASA for the exams. Uh, although all helicopters have a helicopter hover ceiling height, so 22, the Rubbers R44, the Bell Jet Range, the AC-130, the Squirrel, um, once again guys, today is just specifically looking at the Bell, Jet, Bell Long Ranger and specifically using that Australian CASA flight extract. Um, with that in mind guys, let's crack into it. So guys, in order to get the most out of today's lesson or today's exercise, I really do encourage you to be proactive, actually follow along, do your own sort of calculations, make your own markings in the CASA Long Ranger flight extract book there. Don't just kind of follow me through the screen. Um, in order to do that, you will need a few things. You'll need a pen or a pencil, an eraser, a ruler, a calculator, and a copy of the Bell Long Ranger Flight Meal Extract. Uh, if you don't currently have a copy of that, in the YouTube comments there for the description of the video, there is actually a link through to the CASA website where you can download the flight manual for the Long Ranger there. So the first thing we'll look at, guys, is what is a hover ceiling, what factors affect it, and why does it matter? So a hover ceiling is the height and the weight that you can safely hover either in ground effect or out of ground effect. And a hover ceiling is affected by the following factors, the outside air temperature, the pressure altitude, the wind direction and the gross weight or the all up weight of your aircraft. So to give you a little bit of a practical example here guys, when we would actually use this in a day to day operation, we've got our little helipad here, our sort of um, hanger down down on the ground, and off in the distance we've got a mountain with a, a sort of a resort on top, so it might be a winery for example, or it might be a, a overnight motel, a bit of luxury accommodation. So our first example is we have some tourists come in, want us to fly them up to the winery for lunch, drop them off so they can have a bit of a boozy lunch. So the first thing we really need to look at here guys, from a hover ceiling height perspective, is can we safely hover in ground effect? at the height of the resort there. Because if we can't actually hover in ground effect at the height of the resort, we're gonna have difficulty doing a normal landing and a normal takeoff profile. The second scenario would be if you've been tasked, for example, as to sling loads of materials up to the resort. We need to be able to confirm that we're actually gonna be, be able to hover out of ground effect at the height of the resort there, or 100 feet above the resort. Reason being, if we can't actually hover out of ground effect, we're gonna be unable to position our sling load to drop those materials off. So understanding sort of what a hover ceiling height is, guys, what factors affect it and why does it matter, let's have a look at some of the some of the considerations we need to take to actually go through and calculate this out. So the first thing to look at, guys, is what they call area A versus area B, or the wind direction. So on page 14 of the flight menu there, you've got this sort of uh, diagram. And basically what it says is a tail rotor control margin or the engine temperature may, may preclude operation area B, the hover ceiling charts. So what that effectively means, guys, is the wind's coming from anywhere from these angles, so anywhere from 50 degrees off the nose, round to 210 degrees off the nose, it's actually going to limit the height or the weight at which we can hover, both in ground effect and out of ground effect. So when we're doing our calculations, we just need to take into factor, where is the wind coming from? The second thing to look at here, guys, is the hover charts themselves. So the hover, hover in ground effect chart on the left, and the hover out of ground effect chart on the right. As you'll see guys, both charts look very similar. Both charts actually work the same way as far as calculations go. The in-ground effect chart is on page 16 in the flight manual, and the out-of-ground effect chart is on page 17. Just really encourage you guys, when you actually get into your exam situation, or when you start using flight manuals, do ensure that you are using the correct either in-ground effect or out-of-ground effect chart. Unfortunately, I have spoken to a few people who have um, not sort of had got the correct answer in the CASA exam, because a little bit of time pressure, a little bit of exam stress, they come across a hover in ground effect question, they turn to page 17, saw the chart, calculated out the answer, 
and obviously came up with an incorrect answer. So just be aware that guys, in Grand Effect versus in Grand Effect, the charts do look similar, but they are very different answers. So having covered off that guys, let's actually just have a look at how we actually do a calculation here. So classic example question, based on the following criteria, confirm if the flight can take place safely based on the in-ground effect topper. So the outside air temperature of 30 degrees, pressure attitude of 6,000 feet, wind direction of 25 degrees off the nose, and a gross rate of 3,800 pounds. So step one, our first step here, is just to confirm are we area A or area B? So do this, we go back to page 14, we mark our wind direction, and we can confirm here that we're going to be operating within area A of the chart, or the, the, the area A versus B. Step two is to confirm that we are actually using the correct chart, the in-ground effect chart. So that's on page 16. Once again, guys, just refer to the loft, top left hand of the page there. Step three is to draw a line up to 6,000 feet from the 30 degree mark. So chart looks somewhat like that. Step four is to draw a line to 6,000 feet from 3,800 pounds. So a chart looks something like that. Step five here, draw a line left to right, left to right. Step six, confirm that both the left and the right intersecting points are within the required boundaries. So a left intersecting point there is fine. A right intersecting point there is fine. So the answer for this question is yes, this flight can take place safely. Similar question, uh, based on the following criteria, confirming if the flight can take place, is, place, place safely based on an out of ground effect hover. So 30 degrees, 6,000 feet, wind direction 75 degrees off the nose, and a gross rate of 30 to 100 pounds. So same steps. Step one, confirm area A or area B. So go to page 14, mark our wind direction there, and identify that for this question, we're going to be working in a area B situation. Step two, confirm that we're using the correct out of ground effect chart. So page 17 there, once again, refer to the top left hand corner. Step three, draw a line to 6,000 feet from the 30 degree mark. Step four, draw a line to 6,000 feet from 3,800 pounds. Step five, draw a line left to right. Step six, confirm that both the left and right intersecting points are within the required boundaries. So a left intersecting point there is fine. However, a right intersecting point there sits in the clearly shaded area B. So for this flight, the answer is no, this flight cannot take place safely. Moving on guys. So this time, based on the fine criteria, calculate the maximum height that the in-ground effect hover can occur. So we don't actually know our pressure attitude, so we need to actually use our graphs to go through and work out what pressure attitude can we actually hover safely in-ground effect. So what we do know is we do know we've got an outside air temperature of 40 degrees, we've got a wind direction of 315 degrees off the nose, and a gross rate of 4,000 pounds. So very similar steps, guys. Step one, confirm area A or area B. So once again, page 14, identify where our wind is coming from, and clearly, area A. Step two, confirm that we're using the correct chart, the in-ground effect chart. Step three, draw a line up from 40 degrees. Because we don't actually know our pressure altitude at this stage, I just take it all the way to the top of the page. Step four, draw a line up from 4,000 pounds. Once again, because we don't know our our pressure attitude there, just take it all the way to the top of the page. Step five, identify our limiting points. So our left, in, our left, into, our left limiting point here is right about there, sort of about the 3,000, 3,500 mark. Our right intersecting point there is at the 40 degrees. So although we're in area A, we do need to look at that hot day 40 degree area mark. So for this one, because our left limiting point is a lower, our maximum in-ground effect height is 3,000 feet. Similar question guys, based this time on our out-of-ground effect. So based on the following criteria, calculate the maximum height that out-of-ground effect hover can occur. So out to the air temperature 20 degrees, wind direction 200 degrees off the nose, gross rate 4,000 pounds, and our pressure attitude is unknown. So step one, confirm area A or area B. 
So mark 200 degrees off the nose. So this time we're going to be operating in the area B. Step two, confirm that we're using the add or ground effect chart. So once again, page 17, just refer to the top left hand corner. Can't stress that point enough. Step three, draw a line up from 20 degrees. Same example guys, because we don't know what our pressure altitude is, just take it to the top of the page. And step four, draw a line up from 4,000 pounds. Step five, identify our limiting points. So on our left line here guys, we don't actually have a limiting point, we could go all the way to 15,000 feet. On our right hand side, because we're operating in area B, that becomes our limiting point there. Draw a line left to right, using our limiting point on the right hand side for area B. And we arrive at our answer that our maximum out of ground effect hover based on the above criteria is 5200 feet. This time guys, we're going to be calculating the maximum weight that an in ground effect hover can occur. So outside air temperature of 30 degrees, wind direction of 270 degrees off the nose, pressure altitude of 8000 feet, and our weight is unknown, or our rate is what we need to calculate. So step one, confirm area A or area B. So we go through to page 14, mark our wind direction there, identify that we're operating within area A. Step two, confirm that we're using the correct in-ground effect chart. Step three, draw a line up from 30 degrees. Once again, guys, because we're still unknown here, just take it to the top of the page. Step four, draw a line right from 8,000 feet. Step five, identify our limiting point. So our limiting point here is not the area B mark. Our limiting point here is the hot, it is the line there. So step six, draw a line top to bottom. And our answer, our maximum ground in, in ground effect hover weight is 3,900 pounds. So even though we could operate within area B there guys, our hot day chart there, or hot day line of 30 degrees for our limiting point, gives our answer of 3,900 pounds. One more question guys, based on the following criteria, calculate the maximum weight that our out of ground effect hover can occur. So outside air temperature of 20 degrees, wind direction of 90 degrees off the nose, pressure altitude of 6,000 feet, and gross rate is unknown. So step one, confirm area A or area B. So once again, go through to page 14, identify our wind, and identify that we're working in an area B area. Step two, confirm the out of ground effect chart. Make sure you're using the correct chart there. Step three, draw a line up from 20 degrees. Step four, draw a line right from 6,000. Step five, identify our limiting point. So our limiting point here is there at the area B mark. Draw a line from the top to the bottom. And arrive at our answer, our maximum out of ground effect hover weight is 3,950 pounds. So that's, that covers off that lesson guys. That's how to calculate out if your flight can take place safely, how to calculate the maximum weight that our in ground effect or out of ground effect hover, chart, hover height, and how to confirm the weight in ground effect and out of ground effect for the hover ceiling heights there. Uh, if you do have any questions, any comments, any feedback, I really would like to, uh, I guess, it, you know, so we see that um, in the YouTube comments there, just put a comment down. Any other suggestions or requests for a video, once again, guys, in the comments there, I'd love to do a video that you guys find beneficial. Have a great day.